In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, we're going to take our second look at content-aware editing. In this tutorial, we'd like to give you tips on how to select segments of your raw videos that you put in your content-aware editor and decide which ones to keep and which ones to discard so you can be more selective in what you put in your timeline as you begin to build your project. Again, we'd like to remind you that there are two ways to get into the Content Aware Editing feature. One is simply right click on any raw video in your media room, and then you can click on Edit Using Content Aware Editing. The other way is to change the way in which you see the media room. I'm going to click on the seven dots in the down arrow icon, the library menu, and then I have an option called Content Aware Details and I'm going to click on that. And you notice as looking at this one that I have already analyzed five of the six videos that you see here. Now to analyze the last one, I can click on the blue box, it will inherit a check mark, and click on Analyze. Or another way is simply to click on the Edit column and click on Edit using Content Aware Editing. PowerDirector will proceed to analyze the content of that particular video. We'll pause and show you what happens when we're done. As we saw in the previous exercise, this looks for seven different kinds of features in the quality of the video. Zoom, pan, faces, speech, motion, shaky video, and poor lighting. And if I hover over any of these, and here I have downward pan in this segment, I double click on it, and it will show me the downward pan. If I click on this one, it says I have motion, and there's a motion of the drone actually landing. And then I also have, in that segment, because the camera is jerking, a camera shake problem. Let's cancel this and open another video. Let's take the parade one. And I'll click on my editor. Now I'm back in my content aware editing screen, and I have a host of things. Let's assume that I want to look at some features in this segment that I want to either keep or toss out when I begin to build my timeline. If I have an entire section I want to deal with, let, let's take this camera shake section here, and I say, well, no matter what's on this track, I don't want it in my final production. I can click on it, and then I can click on either the selected or deselected button. And I prefer to use the deselected method. I'll show you why in a moment. So when I click on the button, two things happen. It takes that range of my video, those frames, and it turns it red, and then it immediately puts that segment into my deselected box on the lower right. Let's try that again over here for fun. We'll take the faces, click on deselected. We have the same option. Now there's another way I can put items in my deselected category. I can click anywhere I want to, and then I can click on my mark in and drag the triangle wherever I want it to go. It doesn't matter how many of these boxes I include all or part of. And then I can click on my mark out. And now I have a segment. I can select or deselect. Again, I'm going to deselect this one. And when I do that, again, it took that segment and it placed it in my deselected area. Now, if I want to edit that, change it, all I need to do is change, click on it, and change the duration of that area. And now it's changed it for me. So now it's a shorter deselected segment. You can do that with any of these wherever you find them by just moving the mark in and mark out property. Now what I liked about this is that it allows me to say I'm not going to use this segment or this segment or that segment and tells me may maybe why, especially if I have lots of shaky video or poor lighting. We'll get to that in exercise three. But what I'd like to do now is say, okay, I want to include the rest. The nice feature in PowerDirector is that you don't have to go in and mark the other segments independently. With all these segments selected, I can click on the double-headed arrow. It says select all except the deselected content. 
So when I click on that automatically, I get a, a warning message and I do want to continue. I'll say yes. And it will take all the other segments. It will color them blue because I have blue in my selected area. And now these four segments, if I click on OK, will automatically appear in my timeline as I begin to build my project. And if I change my mind after that, I can click the undo button or I can uh, move items out of selected or deselected back onto the timeline. I can click on here and I can say add to selected and it will automatically turn it from red to blue. Or I can click here and I can cl click on the trash can and it's now neither selected or unselected. So those are the options I have in changing that. So let's take another segment here and we'll do a mark in and we'll go this far and do a mark out. Now we have this marked out. I'll do deselected. We'll try a short one here and I'll deselect this segment again. So again, to pick everything that's not deselected, I click on the double-headed arrow, say yes, and now I have my five segments that are in my selected area. You have to have at least one area that's selected in order for the OK button to function. So when I'm done, I click on OK, and it takes those parts of that particular video and puts them on the timeline. Now once again, you're not limited to what it has done already. You can go back and change it. For example, if I want to widen this area here and then lengthen the duration of this clip, I just made some edits and included a little more, a few more frames than I had before. So you can edit this segment any way you want to in PowerDirector, just like any other video clip you would ever use. And I can go back here to get to my small icons and make it look a little bit more familiar to me. But once you've done that, this is what you see on your timeline. It's a great way to analyze your videos, looking for things that you like in particular and looking for things that might be questionable to include or exclude them instead of editing all that information right on the main timeline. In the next tutorial, we're going to look at how to deal with the two bottom areas in the Content Aware editing screen, shaky video and poor lighting.